Welcome to Technology Business Research. This is our Gimme 3 series, where I sit down with one of my colleagues and talk about something they've written, and I ask them three questions. Today, we're flipping that around. Uh, I've got my colleague, Boz Tristoff, with me here, a principal analyst on the IT services, professional services, and digital transformation team, my team, and we're gonna switch it around, have him ask me some questions about something I just wrote, our Innovation and Transformation Center's Market Landscape. Uh, it comes out once a year, it just published this month. Um, Boz has been with me on a bunch of trips all over the world, looking at some of these places. Obviously, we haven't gone to a lot in recent years uh, because of the pandemic, but we're looking forward to getting back out there again. So we released this Center's Innovation and Transformation Center's Market Landscape, and now it's a chance for Boz to ask me three questions, so here we go. Thank you for the opportunity to turn the tables around, Patrick. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, looking forward to the conversation today. Um, we just maybe starting with a one very high level question, uh, thinking about the, the innovation center landscape and maybe just share with our audience, what are some of the biggest changes you observed? You mentioned the report comes once a mm -hmm. year. So maybe over the last year or even maybe the last two years, given the pandemic and everything, what are some of the changes you want to kind of call out um, for our, our leadership? Yeah, absolutely. So we, as you know, we have been doing it semi-annually because there was enough happening in the space and we decided to cut it back to annually in part because with the pandemic, a lot of companies stopped making big changes, stopped uh, launching new innovation yeah. centers. There was definitely a, a slowdown in the investment that went into these places. Um, so while I, I think there's, we're in a lull now and mm -hmm. I think we're going to be coming out of that lull very soon. And I think the reason why the, those investments will ramp back up has a lot to do with what hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. So some of the fundamental reasons why Deloitte, PwC, you know, EY, uh, were on the early end of this, um, Accenture, uh, KPMG, the reasons why they invested early on are still there. They still need to have a place where they can bring their clients and show them everything that they do. And not to say a showcase, but to be able to say to a client, you know us for doing your SAP implementation, but by the way, we can do all these other things too. That kind of stuff is one of the compelling reasons why so much investment went into these places. So that's still there. We still talk to, and you know from, from your research and yep. voice of the customer, um, some of these clients still look at some of these vendors for only one thing. So as yep. every single vendor looks to expand their footprint within the client, these kinds of centers are essential. A second thing that, that was behind was was behind building these centers, although maybe not as explicitly at first, was the talent development. Mm -hmm. Being able to build a talent pool that had these, you know, creative, innovative, transformation skills, these digital transformation skills, and be able to permeate throughout an entire company by building up this talent at yeah. these centers. That hasn't gone away. So I think we're at a we're at a low right now, but the fundamentals behind these centers are too strong that we're not going to see it, it tick back up. Got it. Yeah, I mean, maybe picking up on that particular uh, point, being in the law and kind of like thinking about the current macroeconomic environment, um, just what we have started observing, and I think we likely see accelerating into 2023, is the shift towards more to run the business awards, right. clients thinking about where they can optimize cost, operations, uh, vendor consolidation, simplification of their technology stack. How do you see the innovation centers fit in that equation as you're thinking about Innovation usually comes with uh, as part of the discretionary spend, right? right? Are there any kind of trends that you are looking into into 2023 and beyond as you're thinking about the macro climate, as you're thinking about how the engagement model uh, is changing and the role of the innovation centers being part of that equation moving forward? Yeah, I think that's where when we, when we put this research together and we called it innovation and transformation centers, I think we could have, we loaded a lot of words or lo loaded a lot of ideas into those two words. So the innovation part of that is where you get uh, the disruptive technologies, uh, which when we started this research you know, five, six, seven years ago, um, was all around things like edge and 5G and sure. all that, a cloud even. So we've gone beyond that, but disruptive technologies never stop being yeah. new and disruptive. So um, everyone's talking about AI. Everyone is going to want to go to a center to see, well, what are the kind of things that I can actually do with AI or have a center brought to them. And that's something else we can talk about. So I think the, the while there is a run the business imperative uh, and especially as the macroeconomic client uh, climate forces clients to spend more on run the business, there's still going to be that disruptive technology, that, that innovation need. Mm -hmm. And then the second half of it, so it's innovation and transformation centers. The transformation part we've seen, and, and you, you know this from your, your digital transformation portfolio research, 
the, the transfer, a lot of companies have moved beyond the sort of breakthrough uh, monumental transformation and are now in that iterative transformation. Mm -hmm. We were just on the phone yesterday um, talking to EY and it's one of the things that really struck me was how what they were talking about clients that have gone through uh, a big transformation in one part of their business and are now looking to them to help them with the next transformation. So it's iterative. We could we could call this the innovation and iterative transformation yeah. <laughs> centers if we wanted to, because that's the stage we're at yeah. now. And, and iterative transformation is another way of saying, run the business smarter, run the business yeah. uh, more efficiently. Yeah, I, I like that idea, emphasizing the, the latter part of the, the name, the transformation, because we're hearing more about those large transformation programs now being the focus, uh, I guess, less about a true new innovation. Obviously, nobody's ignoring the new technologies, right. but uh, which essentially we started to see something that um, is a is an opportunity for those large transformation programs to start feeding the innovation kind of from the kind of the back door opening essentially for the innovation and you know increase the client stickiness. Right, and I think we always thought about clients going there and having this you know one or two day workshop yeah. where they had all these brilliant ideas that they can get creative and all that. Now I think we're thinking more about clients coming back in, mm -hmm. sort of doing you know, and that's that's going to be a tough sell in the sense of um, you know why do I need to go spend more time at that? Why do I need to get my senior leadership in there? But then when you when you think about post pandemic, people want to be in a physical place. They want yeah. to be uh, you know it, they want to be out of their office and somewhere where they can focus on that iterative transformation they need to make. Okay, so right, you got one question left. So oh yeah, ask, ask uh, carefully. Ask carefully. Wow, that's that's a put me on the spot there. Um, well, as you think about that iterative transformation and the cycle, as we look into, you just said clients want to come back in person. How should vendors think about as they're placing their bets carefully, right? Mm -hmm. As we are thinking about, you know, if they have to invest and if they want to continue to utilize those facilities. What are some of the areas and how should they be thinking about uh, the innovation and transformation centers moving forward? And are there any vendors that you have observed that stand out so far in terms of the investments that you think that they will uh, lead away? Yeah, I think um, so. I'll, I'll tackle the, the second part of it first. Who are the vendors that I think are doing something different or who are, are going to be more aggressive or more exciting yeah. to watch in the coming uh, the coming couple of years. Um, and there's sort of three different categories. One, I think, are the, the technology vendors themselves um, who have figured out that being uh, partnered with the IT services vendors and the consultancies in a very branded, explicit way mm -hmm. um, is a really important part for their business to be able to ensure that they're part of these, again, these innovation and transformations. Um, and I think of a, a company, PTC, so we went to their, mm -hmm. um, they don't call it an innovation center, they're a client uh, or commercial or customer engagement center or something like that. We wrote up a report on it. Um, and you, you can take a look at what they're doing. I think they're, one of the lessons they learned out of the, the pandemic that was critical, and, and this is maybe what you know we'll see coming up too, is hybrid is gone. Forget mm -hmm. about hybrid. It's Hybrid is suboptimal for somebody, either the, the virtual or the in-person. Um, so I think we're going to see a real push towards just everybody's got to be there in person. And I'll come back to why that's really important in a minute. Um, so I think the technology vendors are, are going to do more to build out their presence at these centers, mm -hmm. if not um, explicitly building their own centers. Um, I think we'll see the management consultancies reinvigorate what they're doing at these centers mm -hmm. and probably in two different ways. One is going to be to take the physical places that they have now mm -hmm. and make them more compelling for people to come, for clients to come to and to be at. Um, so we, you know, we've been to, to, to PwC Miami and Hallandale. Incredibly impressive. I know they're doing more to, to make that um, an even better, more compelling yeah. draw. Um, so that's going to happen. And then at the same time, I think there, we, we talked about this a few years ago, this idea of the food truckification yes, of the centers, yes, yes, where yes. taking everything that is valuable about those centers and bring into the client side, but doing it in a way that you're still taking the client out of their own comfort zone, mm -hmm. out of their own office. So I think we're going to see an effort to do that um, pro and probably um, focused on not only just the, the most important clients, but the clients in a particular industry, uh, the clients that have a, spe a specific regional footprint that you're able to sort of pull them together. So that's the second category. And then I think the third is what we're seeing from IBM and Accenture, where mm -hmm. they've, they've basically said um, the focus has shifted too much to the technology. The yeah. focus has shifted too much to the disruption and to the creativity. And all. Let's come right back to the clients. So mm -hmm. they're, they're building these little kind of mini centers. Um, one of, 
IBM calls it client innovation centers and Accenture calls it customer innovation centers. Or so, uh, I may have those mixed up, yeah. but the bottom line is what they're doing is they're sort of re reorienting these centers around truly around the client. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's it's super smart in the short term. It makes a ton of sense. I think what we saw with these centers as they evolved was no matter how much you say we're customer centric and we're focused on the client's business problems, these centers are such a big investment that eventually you start bringing in, right. you know, you start working on your own internal knowledge management, you start working on your, your broader ecosystem, you start working on your community, building yeah. up that, that community relationship. So I think that's, those are the things we're going to see. And I think to, to touch on PTC again, one of the things that they a lesson they learned, not only is hybrid not the way to go, they also learned that as a technology vendor, you need to ensure that your technology that's at one of your IT services or management consulting partners locations is as up to date and as, as current as possible because your own brand can suffer if a client comes sure. in and sees and yeah. it's not the best. So I think that lesson is going to be super important. Um, I think to touch on community again, I think the, the idea of being part of a community. We saw this with Capgemini yeah. when they opened their yeah. very yeah. first uh, applied innovation exchange in San Francisco, yeah. it was focused on community. We saw with PwC when they opened up in Berlin. I think that we're gonna see again, that this focus on being part of a community and being part of a community in many ways is gonna be um, being part of a specific industry, mm -hmm. uh, being part of a specific uh, culture and location. And so uh, I talk about this in, in um, the printed version of this um, that's gonna come out. That is, it's sort of companies are going to draw a little Venn diagram where they're going to mm -hmm. say, you know, they're going to say industry, um, key clients, and then the capabilities they have. And they'll say, okay, let's let's focus right there and let's yep. build right there. So I think that's that's where it's headed. That answer all your questions, Paul? It does, actually, way more than I was anticipating. But yeah, that's uh, definitely a great uh, great insight. Uh, a lot to look into in terms of like what's coming up. Um, and the more you describe the, the changes, uh, the more it makes me think that those innovation and transformation centers are still an important piece of those companies' portfolios. They're not to be ignored. Um, it will, we may face some short-term um, headwinds, uh, yep. but long-term still an opportunity for vendors to um, plan for budget and think about the expanding ecosystem of who should they be bringing to those centers not just their clients, but their partners, as you brought up with right. PPC example, how how that is changing the landscape is also something for for us to to look up for and to ask questions around as well. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that the it fits so well within our research for the cloud ecosystem market landscape that, yep. that you that you write as well. It fits in there. It fits in with everything we're looking yep. at in management consulting, and and I I think to go back to what I said at the very beginning the fundamental reasons why these centers were first, first built and stood up and, and so much about yep. those haven't changed. So while we may be in a lull now, while the macroeconomic climate may be a little bit you know cloudy, I think we're still gonna see those yeah. coming. Through. So thank you very much, Boz. Thank you. Uh, thank you everybody. We'll be back with another Gimme 3 um, soon.